Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Sultai Reanimator. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. It's a little early today, but we are going to push through. Uh, as some of you guys know, next week marks a very busy week for me. I will be out of town until Thursday uh, due to a conference, so I'm trying to pre-record a little bit, get a little bit ahead. Hopefully, we won't miss a day. I know John's going to be jumping on some of these days probably as well, so John, thank you so much. Uh, we do have our giveaway also ending on Friday next week, uh, the 16th. So if you are not already subscribed to the channel, that is a way, one of four, uh, for you to enter the Dominaria United giveaway. We're giving away a free draft booster box in the set, guys, so you are going to want to jump on that. Uh, again, subscribing is one way. You can also follow us on Twitter, jump on our Discord, and jump on our Instagram. Those are all four free ways that you can enter the giveaway. Uh, doing all of them gives you the best chance to actually win, so please do keep that in mind. But let's talk about today's deck. So uh, literally, I think it was last week, we played a rotation-proof version of Sultai Reanimator. And the, the idea was, uh, first and foremost, that video did really well, so thank you guys. Um, excuse me. But the idea was to try and see, uh, because Reanimator was so prevalent, even in you know Streets of New Capenna standard, uh, if we could make something work that was a good basis for what might become a very strong Sultai Reanimator list after rotation. This is the updated version of that deck. I have cloned it and then just basically replaced a few things, added a few things, removed a few things, basically gotten it to the point where I think it's a very strong deck. Uh, I have tweaked around with this quite a bit and I've got some reasons for some of the, 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 the decisions that I've made, uh, albeit they may not be exhaustive for sure. So do keep in mind that if you've got a better suggestion for us, just leave it down below. I'd really appreciate it. One thing I will say right off the bat, I did not touch the mana base at all. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. Mostly, I feel the pain lands are a little tricky for us to run in a deck like this, uh, where we're a little bit reactive until we're very proactive. I don't want to be pinging myself for a lot of damage in that process. And so, uh, for that reason, I have kind of moved things around a little bit, or, or I should say leave them alone. Uh, I didn't want to move things around too much there, but I did move around quite a bit in the main deck. So uh, the actual like reanimator targets are vastly similar, if not the same. Uh, Jenga Taxis, Titan, and Toxerol are like the big heavy hitters. We didn't even change the number or the uh, the skew here for Graveyard Shift and Diagraph at Birth. I like both of those. Uh, where you do start to notice some changes, Shieldred is actually in here replacing the Consuming Blob, I believe was the card name. Uh, love Consuming Blob, but I wanted to have a nice kind of mid-rangey threat that was difficult for the opponent to deal with with things like Cut Down, uh, which we do see quite prevalent right now. Uh, but also punishes the draw uh, for the opponent and gains us some life on our draws. Uh, which I think is really important, especially with cards like Thirst for Discovery and Kaito, uh, as well as things like the Celestis Tainted Indulgence. Uh, Shieldred works great for these kinds of cards because we get to maximize the draw by drawing a lot of extra cards, even though we're discarding some, it works for us, but let's gain some life in the process. Uh, and so this actually, this little combo that Shieldred represents is a nice little mid-range way of getting us back in the game, solidifying the board state with a creature that the opponents can't easily get through. Uh, and just making sure that we're we're capitalizing on all that life gain. So uh, definitely an interesting include here. Not necessarily a card we're looking to just like straight up reanimate. Uh, it's more of like a, hey, we can just play this out, but we don't need tons of them. So obviously we've only got two here. Uh, in the three drop slot, one of the biggest changes is obviously including Liliana of the Veil. Uh, absolute powerhouse for this deck. This is probably the most impactful card for Reanimator that we have seen uh, in this new uh, set because each player gets to discard a card is the plus ability. <laughs> uh, and so we actually, you know, if we have a, a stranded card in hand, we can just use Liliana, discard it, but we're also discarding from the opponent's hand. Uh, there's also the long-term benefit of potentially ultimating or just removing a threat from the battlefield. And not only that, but this gets around a lot of other decks Excuse me, that utilize things like Titan of Industry. If they put a shield counter on Titan of Industry, 
doesn't matter the sacrifice still happens and so this actually gets around quite a lot for us Liliana is probably one of the most impactful cards we've seen in standard so uh, just hugely hugely awesome for this deck uh, I did also include a one of Kaito which I did not include in the previous list uh, truthfully for that plus one only uh, just because we can draw a card, discard a card, uh, if we need to, we can just use it as a long-term draw engine so we can dig deeper into the deck. Uh, just a really good option. Uh, I don't believe we actually have Meat Hook Massacre in the deck either. Um, I actually upped that with Path of Peril. Uh, the reason being is really quite simple. Generally speaking, when you're starting a new rotation, you find yourself against a lot of aggro-y decks, uh, because that's just like the natural starting point for a lot of people. Makes total sense. I wanted to find a way to include a couple extra pieces of removal without it being point and shoot removal, if that makes sense. Uh, and so Meat Hook was kind of just the natural way to go. Uh, we've already got three Path of Perils here, but Path of Peril is more of a long-term plan. I wanted something in the early turns to just kind of get rid of some stuff. Uh, truthfully, Path of Peril works for that as well. But uh, between Meat Hook, Path, and Lily, we've actually got quite a bit of removal in the in the deck here, as of course Toxroll as well, technically. Uh, and so, all in all, I'm really enjoying this deck. I have played it, I have tested it, it's been very good. We'll see if we actually get some wins with it today. I'm very excited, guys. Let's go ahead, let's jump in, let's take a second look at Sultai Reanimator now that Dominaria is out. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. A uh, bit of an interesting one, but I do think we can try it. Uh, we do have the Celestis to help ramp us, and then one and two otherworldly gaze is actually not that bad. So uh, we are going to need to drop the Rafine's Tower at some point here, which is going to be a little awkward, but uh, I think the play is pretty straightforward. We're just going to go for the otherworldly gaze on the opponent's instep here uh, and hope for the best. Or truthfully now, because they can't really do anything. Um, okay. Uh, I actually think it's these two that we throw back. Uh, I do really like Tainted Indulgence. I think it's one of the, the better cards here. So I'm actually going to go for the Rafine's Tower right now. Uh, not exactly an ideal play for sure, but the idea is we will need that black mana uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, and so I'd rather go ahead and get that going now. Um... Here, I think we're just going to go for the Celestis, given that they probably don't have a counter spell. So we're basically just ramping our way into a good setup here and hoping that they really don't do too much in the in the interim, uh, which it looks like they're not planning to. So that's helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and Tainted Indulgence first. Blech, not great. Um, we'll just discard a basic. Not a really exciting, exciting play at all. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, and I will all too happily just plus up here. Um, I think we actually get rid of the Glade, uh, because we can actually use the Abandoned Mire as we see fit. Okay, so they discarded a land too. Makes perfect sense. That's fine. Um, I'm assuming they're going to have a way to deal with Liliana, but we are going to force that, that play. Uh, and if they can't, yeah, okay. So they burn down the house solely to kill a Lily. That's a, that's a bold move. Um, all right. So, I mean, I think we just channel this out. Uh, really easy way to get around quite a bit. Uh, and then we can just play land. I'm going to go ahead and otherworldly gaze as well while they are basically tapped out. Um, I kind of like all these. Um... I think we're actually going to do this and do this. I like having the Lily as a backup option. So now we've got Toxroll in the graveyard. We've got the Rebirth available. So basically, we just have to hope they can't exile. And, like, we're kind of fine. Uh, Toxroll also just immediately kills this uh, at the end step, which is really helpful. <laughs> uh, we do have to hope they don't have, like, a, a hard counter of any kind. Um, they could very easily have negates. Looks like they've got a galvanic iteration first. Interesting. All right, so I will just go for this now. Uh, the nice thing is this does have flashback, so even if this does get countered and it's not exiled, we actually just get it later. Uh, so this is a pretty easy way to uh, get rid of the wandering mind. Uh, ideally, they can't bounce this. We don't know that, but I'm assuming. Uh, so, easy enough. Very good. Uh, I do anticipate they will have something scary here, given they got a Galvanic iteration, but I'm curious to know what that might be. Uh, what's nice is if it's a creature, A, Toxroll itself just kind of helps deal with that, but um, obviously Lily is also very helpful for us. 
This is not great for them. Uh, I think we are gonna otherworldly gaze at some point, but we're leaving these up as basically like a, well, I guess they know our hand, don't they? Yeah, we could just go ahead and otherworldly gaze if we'd like. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this, because they do know our entire hand at this point, so it's not really, not really worth it. Um, hmm. I like all of these, actually. Um, I think we'll discard these two, though, and just keep the Thirst. Uh, a bit of a surprising one for some people, maybe, but I think Thirst is actually where we are hoping to get to. Uh, given we've already got Lily in hand, We've got a Diagraph for birth. We kind of just need more stuff in the yard. Uh, ideally, like a Jenga Taxus would be really sick. Uh, but I don't think we're there yet. Uh, we can also sacrifice slugs just to deal some damage. But I think first things first, we're just going to attack. Um, I don't see a huge reason not to attack. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, it's a pretty large chunk of damage. Uh... I think we'll go ahead and thirst first, uh, just to see, oh man, all the good things. That was, that was really good. Um, okay, sick. Uh, so we will just go ahead and Lily, um, and truthfully we can plus up, uh, but I'm actually just going to pass. Uh, so here's the reason, I really like the idea of like instant speed graveyard shift uh, because it represents a kill option on the end step uh, of the opponent's turn. So yeah, that's fine. They killed one of our things, but I kind of don't care that much. Um, and it looks like they can't burn down the house and galvanic iteration. So uh, we should be okay. That's fine. Uh, we also are going to get Jenga Taxis down here, by the way, uh, like a hundred percent. Okay. Um, one thing to note, by the way, guys, I did forget to mention, we can just play all of our, uh, our major spells here, so, our, our reanimator targets, uh, which is a very important piece to the puzzle, um, just because you never really know if you're gonna be able to or not, uh, and so it really helps to make sure that you are, um, all right, so again, the opponent's really constrained on mana. So here's the situation that they find themselves in. They don't have enough lands, uh, albeit if they attack with the goblin, I guess technically they do. Um, cool. So they're going to have to double up just to uh, get rid of Jenga Taxis. And then we've got two more graveyard shifts available. <laughs> uh, and so we're kind of in a position where it doesn't matter uh, what they do here. Um, yep, totally fine. We've got graveyard shifts upon graveyard shifts here, so I'm not concerned at all. Um, truthfully, I think I just go ahead and play Toxtral, though. Uh, solely because they're gonna flip this, it's gonna make it tricky for them. Um, nice. What a cool card. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, we're gonna do this, actually. This is kind of the safer bet, obviously. We'll destroy, and we'll do this. So we're gonna blow that up, and there we go. We got the win. That was it, guys. That was the game plan. That was absolutely perfect. Let's see if we can keep it up. This month's Patreon rewards feature some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash itresolves. All right, guys, here we are for our next game. How do we feel about this hand? Um, truthfully, not that great. Uh, however, the turn three Lily is really tempting. Um, solely because we already have the Titan in hand, so like that gives us opportunities. I mean, we can try it. We also just have Thirst for Discovery. Um, I'm not, I'm not anticipating this. Uh, that actually really helps, depending on what the opponent's up to. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not overly optimistic, I'll just be honest, um, but that's a, a optimistic start. All right, sick. Uh, Tainted Indulgence is great. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, I think it's just the Jenga Taxis. 
Um, Jenga Taxes is just such a good card because it devalues so much of what the opponent does. <laughs> um, and it really helps us because think about like getting extra Diagraph Rebirths, you know what I mean? Like, just makes it really easy. Um, we do have Path of Peril here, so if they start playing out some more stuff, we're probably just gonna... Interesting. Uh, hmm. Didn't anticipate that. Uh, okay. I think we just Path of Peril? Um, yeah, we, you know, this triggers a couple times. I don't really care about that, though, to be honest. Uh, next turn, we just have Shieldred coming down, and they're very stuck on mana. So this is, I think, just perfect for us. If they can deal with Shieldred, that sucks. But, like, we also have a backup plan. <laughs> uh, and it's a very good one. And it's live next turn. So, truthfully, I'm not all that concerned. <laughs> Uh, excellent. We get to gain that life back. So this is exactly what I was talking about. We could Thirst for Discovery just to kind of overly promote that, but uh, we're 100% just going to go for the, <laughs> the Diagraph for Birth here. I will attack in, given that they just don't have anything. Um, not really overly concerned about that. Um, yeah. We do have that Thirst for Discovery, so next turn it's pretty likely that we go for that, I think. Uh, solely because we'd want to get this Titan in the graveyard to go ahead and get rid of this Meat Hook. Uh, just so we're kind of solidifying and... Okay, there we go. <laughs> Two wins, guys. That was beautiful. And look at this. We rank up to plat four. That was awesome. Uh, let's do one more. I think we have enough time. We'll try and jump right into it. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Probably going to be our last game. Uh, do we like this? I think we can try it. Uh, I don't love it, to be honest, because we've only got a couple lands and we've got no turn one. Potentially not a very good turn two. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and Otherworldly Gaze. Oh, I love all these. <laughs> um, I think it's just this that we throw back. The... The chances of us drawing another land are pretty high, so I'm not all that concerned there. Uh, let's go ahead and throw a... So this is a turn three Lily. Uh, so no matter what they do, we're okay-ish. Okay. Let's do this. Um, I will plus up here. And I think we just get rid of the Diagraph Rebirth, given that we know we've got a fourth land coming, so Shieldred is a guarantee play unless they take it somehow. Uh, but now we've got Lily starting to tick up, uh, and so they are gonna kinda have to figure this one out. Okay. Land is exactly what we want. Um, let's just go ahead and throw Shieldred down. I will actually go ahead and do this, um, and I think it's just the Tainted Rebirth that we throw back. Uh, I just want to keep discarding as much as I can from them so they've got less resources available. Uh, and potentially we just get to a point where, like, <laughs> Lily's kind of good to go. Um, even if they kill Shieldred, we do have Graveyard Shift and then a future Diagraph for Birth later. So, again, I'm not that concerned about any of this. Um, interesting. Okay. Uh... Do we attack in? I actually don't know that we do. Let's uh let's Kaito first. Um Okay. That's fine. Um We honestly don't have a target, so I'm gonna discard. Um this seems a little odd potentially, but I think it's perfectly fine. I am not going to attack. Uh, we're gonna force them into attacking with, in particular, trying to kill the Lily. Or not kill, but excuse me, attack the Lily. Oh, nice. Leyline Binding is a great card, uh, for sure. Uh, very curious to see what they do. Okay, so they are just gonna both on the Lily. It makes sense, given they don't have a ton else they can do. Uh, they do draw a card. Ooh, Path of Peril is so good. All right, we're gonna path. Uh, we really need like hands, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Let's go ahead and discard, so only they will have to, which is nice. They're gonna cycle the land in response, that's fine. And they get rid of a cut down, okay. And they have a spirited companion, very nice. Um, 
So again, we're seeing the, the, the power level of Lily is really high because we are seeing a position now where like, this is like not really in our favor at the moment in general. Like they obviously have a lot going on and we kind of don't. However, um, Lily on her own is still kind of doing some work. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna force the discard here again. The Spirited Companion is good, uh, but right now I'm kind of just on the let's dwindle their resources plan, and I want to keep to that. Uh, this also still threatens, like, they can't really s just, like, freely attack us. Alright. Like, they have to attack Lily is what I mean, because we are threatening the ultimate. So, unless they can kill Lily, like, which I honestly, Archangel of Wrath is a very good card. Uh, yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's otherworldly gaze first. I'm gonna throw both of those back, and then that gives us graveyard shift next turn. Um, I think I'm gonna get this last card out of hand. Uh, it's not a very exciting play, I know. Um, but now they are top decking, so we know what all they have, and we've got a Jenga Taxis coming down next turn. Um, granted, Archangel is still, like, obviously a powerhouse play. We can't really do a lot about that at the moment. Um, this should be enough to, to threaten quite a bit. Um, yeah, we just pass. I will take the action just to see. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's really tempting, actually. Um, but it's really tempting. I do actually think it's that. Uh, the reason being, one, two, so if we get a land, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we do get a land, we just sweep their board. Uh, that seems worthwhile. If we do get a land, we also just have Dire Graph Rebirth anyway. So, like, that's my thing, is we've already got a play, if that makes sense. Uh, this is less ideal, but we are going to go ahead and hit for two here. Just to get a couple of things off the board. Hopefully. Uh, Alright. Um, so now Lily can come down and make them sacrifice this. Unless they just get another creature, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, but they are cycling like crazy with these lands, uh, which is a great sign for us. All right, sick. I don't think they've got anything then. And there's the land. That's also very good. All right, so we're going to Lily and we're going to Sack uh, to hopefully get rid of the Archangel. Uh, worst case scenario, this doesn't work. And then we just have Diagraph for Birth next turn. But it looks like it does. Um, cool. Cool. So then we're just going to pass, and next turn is Diagraph or Birth for Jenga Taxis. And that's kind of it. Um, oh, even better, actually. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and Graveyard Shift. Um, just so we can plus up and not have to discard a card, basically. Uh, hopefully they don't have another... Okay, it was a Make Disappear. Excellent. They really should have countered that, I feel like. Excellent. That's fine. Don't particularly care about that. Um, Alright. Uh, yeah, we're going to do this for two. Sweep their board. Doesn't matter which we keep. Excellent. Uh, we're going to gain some life in that process. And we'll plus up. Uh, attack in for three. Alright, here's the hoping. Um, I mean, they're not gonna have a ton they can do, right? Like, uh, let's activate you. Just to see what we get. Yep, take the action. Alright, well, not super helpful. Um, I'll make them sacrifice a creature. Since these are basically all flipped at this point, like, they don't have a ton they can do. Um, do I attack in? Do I care about Lily at the moment? I think we just attack in. Alright. Uh, so, again, we take the action because, oh, I would have loved that, actually. We do take the action, though, because if it is a threat on the top of our deck, we just get to Diagraph or Birth it later. Um, 
And we just need to draw further into the deck, to be honest. Like, that's kind of our only goal. Wow. Okay. That's super scary. Uh, Sarah Paragon is freaking sick, dude. So good. Yeah. All right. Uh, Path of Peril would have been pretty sick. <laughs> yes, we take the action. I'm glad we took the action just to get the land off the top. Um, I actually do think we get rid of this. Uh, just so we've got a clock on them, essentially, and we gain some life back, so like we're helping ourselves a little bit. I will go ahead and Celestis as well. I'll draw, and I'll discard. Okay. Um, no attacks, obviously. All right. Here's to hoping. <laughs> uh, don't feel overly optimistic about this. They could meat hook for five, which would be really good. Um, they could do quite a bit. They are pinging themselves a little bit with that Sarah Peric or the uh, the Psycho lands here, so that's helpful. All right, yeah, draw again, please. Um, trying to think what our best options are here. So Sarah Paragon can get in. They're gonna attack with all of these. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, I was gonna say all that, and <laughs> they're only attacking with the Paragon. That's fine. Um, we really just need like. We don't have a good reanimation target. I really appreciate them just continuously cycling because it's kind of helping us out a lot. Um, and they've only got two mana left, so I don't know what they could have. Okay, that's a good one. I assume it's Jenga Taxis. Both of those are really good options, so I can see either way. Uh, yep, take the action. Man, again. And again. Goodness gracious. All right, let's uh, cycle. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so we discard that. Play that. Um, do we attack in? No. So my thing is, though, like, we're back up to 24 off of this. <laughs> like, I mean, they can deal a lot of damage to us. So I'm assuming that this isn't going to go our way. But we do have the option of reanimating Jenga Taxis next turn. I would truthfully just... Oh, man. Path of Peril, man. We really needed Path of Peril. Uh, Death Touch, Hexproof, and Life Lifelink. That's pretty... So we're, like, dead, right? They are, this Zer is stupid. Uh, the new Zer is insane to me, okay. I mean, we block here, uh, but we're very dead. Man, we did stay in it for a while because of Shieldred, so I am happy to say that that did work out okay, but we did lose, totally fine. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys, so all in all, how do we feel about Saltai Reanimator? I still think it's quite good. Uh, I know there's also Grixis Reanimator. There's quite a few Reanimator decks out there right now, and for good reason. There is a lot to the Reanimator strategy right now, and there's a lot of different directions you can go, all of which seem perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, the reason I wanted to go Saltai excuse me, is because uh, Diagraph Rebirth in particular is a really good outlet with Liliana. You can discard the Diagraph Rebirth and play it later. It doesn't matter. Uh, there's a lot more of a flashback sub theme to it, if that makes sense. And so you're able to discard cards pretty freely uh, and then be able to just replay a lot of that later uh, while still getting rid of your opponent's resources, especially if they aren't a reanimator deck or whatever. So uh, I think that's one area where the Sultai deck kind of stands out more so than we'll say Grixis just for comparison's sake. Uh, all that to say, of course, all of them are quite good right now. I think there's so many tools for reanimator. It is insane. So I encourage you guys check this out. See what you can do with the list. I'm pretty happy with it. Honestly, I, I like it a lot. Uh, but I would be curious to know what you guys have to say. So let me know in the comment section below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. That will be September 16th for anybody uh, looking to, to see if they won. So thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you again later.